What's up, ladies and gentlemen? This is another amazing video that's intended to be helpful, but you'll have to be the judge of that. This video concerns the uh, a two part problem, clearly. If you read this, you'll see that a car is uh, speeding up and then slowing down. So when you read these problems, you want to keep it simple. If I were to ask you to summarize this, don't say, okay, well, initially it's at rest, and then there's an ex that's too much words. What is this object doing? It is speeding up and slowing down. There are two types of motions, therefore it is two parts. And you can call them part one, part two, speed up, slow down, wh whatever works for you. I'm gonna do part one, because I'm not very creative. I'm gonna list my variables for part one. Initial velocity, final velocity, acceleration, distance traveled in part one, time in part one, and part two. Notice I'm not trying to find numbers that I can immediately write down. I'm slowly listing all my variables, getting everything organized, getting my puzzle pieces down on paper, and then I can fill in what I know. All right, well, speaking of filling in what we know, let's attempt that. We know that the car starts from rest in part one, so I'm going to write zero meters per second, accelerates at 4.3 meters per second squared for 6.8 seconds. All right, that's nice. The car then slows to a stop with an acceleration of 5.1 meters per second squared. So I know the final velocity for part two is going to be zero because it says slow to a stop. And for part one, it said starts from rest. Don't miss these key words. Acceleration of 5.1. All right, well, we are slowing down. That doesn't necessarily mean you have a negative acceleration. You can have a negative acceleration and speed up. What is important is that we're traveling to the right with a positive velocity, and in order to slow down, you must have a negative acceleration. When the signs of velocity and acceleration are opposite, you decrease your speed. When they are the same, you increase speed. And I'll hit this up again uh, when we review some of the major concepts from this problem. So I'm going to write negative 5.1 meters per second squared. Uh, to your credit, though, slowing down in our class will often mean a negative acceleration. Not always, but probably like 90% of the time it does. All right. We are asked to solve for total distance traveled and total time. In a previous video, I had mentioned that writing this out can be very useful, that you add the two distances and you get the total, and you add the two times and you get the total. This problem is pretty straightforward in that it's asking you to do total distance, total time. But there could be a time when you're given total distance and you have to remember like, oh, I was given total distance. If I can get the distance in part one, I can figure out part two. And sometimes writing this out can be useful. All right, but let's get to the, to the mathy part of this problem. All right. Actually, before we do that, since this is not gonna be edited, by now, you should know that the most important connection between two parts of a problem is that the final velocity from part one is equal to the initial velocity of part two. So if you go zero to 60, the end of the story for part one is 60. Then you hit the brakes, all right? Well, the moment you hit the brakes, you're going 60. So the final velocity of part one is equal to initial velocity of part two. That's a huge concept. So you definitely need to get the final velocity part one. Let's do that right now. I'm going to choose math rep number two. And that is final velocity equals initial velocity plus acceleration times time. So final velocity, this was zero, equals 4.3 meters per second squared times 6.8 seconds giving us a final velocity of 29.2 meters per second. Yay, that will become the initial velocity for part two. We are asked to solve for total distance. So I should solve for distance as well. I am going to use math rep number three for this. Actually, I do it over here, where that is delta D is initial velocity times time plus one half acceleration times time squared and the initial velocity is zero, so that kind of helps out. So it's gonna be one half a t squared, our acceleration times our time squared. Don't forget to square. And you get a distance 
of 99.4 meters. Yay. All right, part two. Again, we're asked for total distance, total time, and we now know that the initial velocity of part two is the final from part one. So here, if I want to get time, I'm going to use math rep number two, which is final equals initial velocity plus acceleration times time. Final velocity is zero. How nice. Initial velocity was the final from the previous part, 29.2 meters per second. Hello. Jumping around a little there plus acceleration times time. And our acceleration for part two is negative 5.1 meters per second squared times time. And we get a time to slow down of 5.72 seconds. I did that in my head. I'm that amazing. Then we need the distance traveled. You have options here. You can use um, you can use math rep three or math rep four. Personally, I'm gonna do math rep four. Math rep three is kind of scaring me with the squares and stuff. I don't know, but it's whatever you want to do. So I'm gonna do the VF squared equation. Final velocity squared equals initial velocity squared plus twice the acceleration times the distance. And that is zero. That's part of the reason I'm choosing this. That that does make life easier there. Zero equals 29.2 meters per second squared plus twice the acceleration, which is negative 5.1 meters per second squared, times the distance for part two. So delta D part two is going to be 83.6 meters. Now, if we want to get total distance, total time, uh, you know what to do. And if you don't, let me know, because we need to talk about that. So delta D1 plus delta D2 is the total. So basically just 99.4 meters plus 83.6 meters. And we get a total of 183 meters. And to get the total time, we're just adding the times to get the total. Again, if you don't know that that's how you get total by adding, um, we should talk. We should have a nice little conversation. 6.8 seconds plus 5.72 seconds gives you a total time of, apparently I can't do math. Um, sorry about that. I thought I had it written out ahead of time. 12.5 seconds. And that's it, ladies and gentlemen, we're done. But let's recap, all right? Here's the important stuff. When you read these problems, because they're going to get a lot more complex as the year goes on, I'm talking like four or five part problems. You don't want to be focused on like, okay, initially it's doing this, and then there's this acceleration. You want to keep it simple. Speed up, slow down, collide, skid, fly off a cliff, go down an incline. That's keying you in on what problem solving strategies you will need. So this was just a simple speed up, slow down. So list variables for each part. And as a reminder that sometimes writing out the, the sum of the distances is the total and the sum of the times is the total time, that can be useful. Uh, some people forget about it and, and it's easier if it's not in your head. If it's out in, on paper in front of you, it's less you have to control in your head. The most important thing here in red is that the final velocity of part one becomes the initial for part two. And that can go backwards. Maybe you're working backwards through the problem and you're trying to find the acceleration in part one. Well, that means you're gonna to have to get the initial velocity in part two, which becomes the final in part one. This problem was kind of in the sequence of the problem in the easiest version. It went speed up, slow down, and we solved it that way. But sometimes it's speed up, slow down, and you have to start with the slow down part. We've covered this in class to be careful with signs. If you're moving to the right, it's a positive velocity. Moving left is a negative velocity. But if you're decreasing speed. That means the signs of the velocity and the acceleration must be opposite. And if you're increasing speed, the signs of velocity and acceleration are the same. I will admit that for the majority of the year, slowing down will mean negative acceleration. But please know that you can have a negative acceleration and speed up. An example of this would simply be dropping an object. It has a negative velocity as it falls and it's increasing speed because of the negative acceleration. And when things are dropped, they kind of get faster. Basic physics. Anyway, that's about it. I hope this video has been useful in some way, shape or form. And uh, 
Three out of five stars. I still wouldn't change a thing.